So I'm here with Charlie McKee the day before the 2011 Moth Worlds and Charlie you seem to have turned up with something that's um, an airplane is it? Uh, it's the uh, it's a wing sail there's three have been built by Object 2 and uh, I'm going to be the test pilot so I'm feeling privileged to be able to be the one to uh, take it and race it in its first major championships. So this sail I, I believe was originally developed by and for Bora who brought it here and isn't actually using it in the world championship so how come that's happened Charlie? Uh, Bora and George Pete were uh, the two who helped build it and originally started sailing it uh, and they got it a long way but came to a point a week before the regatta where there were some weaknesses to it that we didn't quite have figured out yet uh, and of course you know they're battling to try to win the championship. Just in one minute can you just tell us what control does what in the simplest possible way? Yep absolutely. Uh, you still have the main sheet just like any other boat trims the wing in and out. Uh, I've taken off the outhaul, taken off the Cunningham, <laughs> taken off the boom vang, and you have this line right here, which is the camber, basically, which puts power in, takes power out. So upwind you have less camber, downwind you have more camber, and that's sort of the one power depower control that you have. So in in a lot of ways, the it's uh, it's elegant in its simplicity. So this is a not this doesn't have a twist adjustment. This particular one. It does not have a twist adjustment. It has a middle element, which also has its own own control here and is sort of uh, variable the amount that the middle flap is open bottom to top and the uh, designers and builders who are a lot smarter than me have sorted that part out and those are the types of things that moving forward if I had three weeks instead of three days and three months instead of three weeks that's where the extra speed would come from that you know would be able to put me contending for the top ten. We know that probably one boat will turn up tomorrow with a with a wing sail. Um, just from your point of view, do you think it's a good thing for the class? And do you intend to go down that route yourself? Um, I don't really think it's a good thing for the class, and I know that I will be seen to be uh, commercially motivated with that sentiment. But um, I think there's a lot of people outside the class who are going, "Oh, you know, the, the moth class is about development." Well, yes, it is. But it's also, the moth class historically has looked at new stuff coming along and gone, do we want this? When foils came along, it wasn't just, yes, foils are allowed, it's let's look at what the moth is. The moth is a single hulled boat. So the first foils had the foils on the end of the wings and effectively made a, tri a, a catamaran or trimaran, give it, giving it a heap more stability than a single hulled boat. So the rule was not change but interpreted to say well these foils are part of the boat so they can't be you can't see air down the middle so we ended up with the current configuration which turns out to be a great configuration it's like the difference between a tricycle and a bicycle you learn to sail this unstable yes. thing and it actually yes. works really well yes. you don't see people racing tricycles very often there's a couple of things you've got to factor in when you think about it one is the heritage of the moth it's always been an open development class um, without that spirit we wouldn't have the awesome foiling machines that we have now we'd have Europe yeah. dinghies which which were a moth originally um, so I guess you've got to be mindful that you don't want to sh shut things down right where they are now for yeah. sure just because we've got a big fleet doesn't mean that the development should stop having said that um, personally the thing that really attracts me to the moth after sailing 18 foot skiffs for so long is they're light they're easy to move around I can go down after work to my sailing club, Volara Sailing Club, rig it up by myself, put it in the water, 20 minutes later I'm sailing, get it out of the water myself, pack it up, 20 minutes later I'm home, my wife barely notices, well she does, but it's not too bad. Yeah. How do you transport it and how hard is it to get in and out? I mean, could you do this by yourself or do you now need two people with a mask like this? Uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite light and it's actually quite easy to pop in and rig. Uh, as far as actually dragging it in the water and back out, uh, George has done it by himself. I'm, <laughs> I don't <Nervous>. want to <laughs> risk it, so I have someone help me carry, you know, help me carry it in and out. But that part is really not that big a deal. It hasn't proven to be fragile, and it hasn't proven to be difficult. There's two parts of this. Firstly, the practicality of this huge solid wing is, is, is I see a problem. Not only transport and manhandling and storing and rescuing, but the fact that the rule of the moth class is 
one sale. And as much as you interpret the current configuration of the C-class type wing, it is two sales. They're saying it's a mass and a sale. Um, well, I just, my feeling is wherever you've got one element feeding the lured side of another element, it's two sales. But the, I, I understand that, but the, the class has passed a rule to say that they are legal. So we're sort no, of no, beyond, we're beyond that, aren't we now? No, we're not. We're not. I thought, I thought no, so no. we passed a rule to say you can use them at this event. This event. Do you feel that, that it is all about the extra potential or is there a little nag in the back of your mind that maybe a, a wing cell for a moth just isn't going to work better than a soft cell? I'm not positive about either. Um, I think if it's going to work on a boat, it would be great to ha have it work on a moth. It seems like an ideal match. Um, some of the issues that I think we're facing are with Reynolds number. We're uh, operating in a sub 200,000 regime, which is kind of a, it's, it's where windmills work, it's where um, gliders work, and there's not a whole lot of knowledge out there about what's happening with airflow in that regime. There's going to be a lot of people arguing, what, have we, what if we banned foils? You know, where would the class be? Well, it wouldn't be anywhere, there's no doubt about it. It would be still a little bumbling class that it was. And, but the foils added a whole range of new stuff yes. into it. A wing sail makes it maybe a little faster, although it hasn't proven. I think the wing sail came 42nd in that event. Yes. Um, so you're saying, what's the point? Why are we doing it? Yeah, it's just like a falling piece it, of fashion, is it, maybe? If it does get its legs up, then is it going to add 1%, 2%? And if it adds 2%, suddenly you've got this monster that you have to have. Um, you know, people saying it's cheap. Well, yeah, it's cheap if you build it yourself and you've got a few skilled people around to help. But it's not cheap once you build it in quantity. Pandora's box has yep. been open for yes, sure. Yes, it has. Um, yep. I, I think uh, there was a lot of people who are very, very, there's a lot of people who are very positive about the effort we put through. Um, I, I feel a little bit disappointed that we couldn't, couldn't um, show better promise yet. It never, it's, it doesn't mean it's not going to show promise. If the conditions that we've had so far hasn't been ideal for it. Yep. But, um, I think it's it's something very unique and it's something very cool and that's that's very that's very key to the it's, moth class. It's definitely both of those things. Final question for you, uh, Bora. Um, it, it, it is cool and it's legal, but is it right for the class? I mean, it's right for people like yourselves. It's possibly right for some of the other professionals. But what about the guys who are struggling with their budget, who are building the boat in the in the in their own backyard? Is it right for them? Do you think is it I another it's, challenge or is it a step too far? I think it's more right for them than anyone else because they can build this very easily it's anyone that's built a model airplane can basically build or a remote control airplane or a yeah. model airplane it's, it's very easy to build actually right. it's probably easier to build than a boat yeah. um, the availability of I mean we're, we're obviously there's some transport issues right now but it's there's a lot of smart people and we could probably solve those issues if we can solve the speed issue first yeah um, might not be a commercially viable project or product for a little bit but who knows in the future? I think, I think it is though a very good thing for the class. It, it you can't restrict um, free thinkers of, of so to say, and the moth class is definitely a home of a lot of free thinkers. Completely. And so, why you said at the beginning that you you would say people would argue that you have commercial reasons for voting against it because clearly you, you make a lot of soft sales. Yep. But um, if you would if you would be prepared to make a, a wing sale, then what's the commercial downside to you? The commercial downside is I actually think that the class would reduce dramatically. So you just have left customers full stop. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. We'll we'll, yep. and we'll see I mean, what happens. I mean, I've been sailing moths for yep. a very long time yep. on and off. Yeah. And it's not just the commercial side of this that I'm interested in. I, I mean, I love the class. Yeah. And I you want what's best for class, I'm sure. What's that? You oh, like I, I absolutely class, do. Yeah. And, and, and yes, I am doing well out of this. Mm. And it's sort of been a very long road to get to this point. And um, I I'm, I'm have no shame in what, what's happened. But, <laughs> and, and I will definitely protect it, but it's not the reason I don't like I understand. Sales. So we talked earlier to Charlie, just going out doing one of the development sales just a day before the Worlds. Um, here's the boat, Charlie, but no wing. What happened? Uh, I, was, uh, I was having a great sale and I was uh, working on my jibing and I had one bad jibe and uh, sort of started to pitch pole 
and rapid deceleration and the front of the wing crumpled. Uh, it was, uh, of the three wings, it was the one that we knew was kind of shaky, uh, but it had been showing some promise of going fast, so you want to give it a we go. wanted to give it a go and we wanted to see what the differences were and we wanted to do it before and not during the regatta. So effectively the mask collapsed in a, in a classic big slowdown, big yeah, nosy slowdown. Yeah, I was probably going, uh, 23, 24 knots. Sure. And so 24 to zero. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you got two more, so we'll see you out. To, you will be using it. Yeah. Mass and tomorrow. Both, both the other two I've used and awesome. have, have, we feel good about it and are reliable. This was the one that was the least reliable, yeah. but we wanted to give it a go. All right. Well, thanks for your time. We better get out the rain. Yeah. But uh, good luck no tomorrow. Worries. Thanks Cheers. very much. Cheers. Okay. The next boat will be number, number four. Followed by three, seven, eight, seven.